morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 25 in the book of Genesis. Today, I'm going to title this Desire for the Wrong Job. We're going to talk primarily today about a disordered rule in the family, a temptation where there's this order and the temptation and the curse is going to bring disorder to what was supposed to be ordered. Um, so we're going to hear about the broken marriage relationship between Adam and Eve, and it's marred first. But first, we've got to talk about snakes. Here we go. This is from Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. Uh, the Lord God said to the serpent, because of the temptation thing, because, uh, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field, and on your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. So this pause here. So this, this creature, this serpent, is more crafty, and now he's going to be more cursed than any other animal. He's going to go on his belly and eat dust all day long. And he went from tempting and lying and murdering those made of dust, and now he's going to be eating dust, which is kind of poetic. All right, then verse 15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. So this describes this ongoing adversarial relationship over the offspring of the serpent and the offspring of Eve. And this is a reference to the utter destruction and the annihilation of Satan by the victory of Jesus that he wins over the consequences of sin and death um, and, yes, the curse. So Satan's going to nag for a while. That's the nipping at the heel. But Jesus is going to win. That's the stomping on the head. So this is the first gospel in the Bible. This is the good news. This is God sending a rescue mission for this very problem that's caused by Adam and Eve. So through their offspring, the lineage, the physical descendants of Adam and Eve, uh, through the son of Seth, we're going to eventually get to Jesus. So they call this the Proto-Evangelicum, where Jesus defeats Satan. And the whole Bible is about Jesus. It's already been about Jesus in, in creation. And here we see now, you know, the start of Jesus coming to fix this problem that Adam and Eve got themselves into. Okay, so now let's, let's turn our attention now to the curse of women. And uh, let's just start. Before we say it, it's real, it's powerful, and it's best understood that this can be ruled over. It can be mastered. So this is verse 16 from chapter 3. To the woman, I said, to the woman, he said, this is God talking, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. I'll sharpen your pain in pregnancy. And in pain you shall bring forth children. That's the first part. And then the second part, your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. So Eve... In a couple of verses from now, it's going to be called the mother of all living. And it's this distinctive and glorious and wonderful, God-ordained, God-designed, gender-specific ability that she has, which is to bring forth life. Uh, this is why it's such a tragedy that the singular marker of our women's movement today is to rejoice in the power not to bring forth life, but to snuff out the lives of the yet unborn. So... I grieve with you if you've been caught up into thinking that this is in any way a good idea. Lord have mercy and let's agree with him about the value of life and also about his ability to forgive. All right, so this unique, glorious ability is what the Lord curses with pain. And there's certainly physical pain in, in childbirth, but now let's Let's look at the other half of the pain. So the other half of the curve, curse censors around headship and submission. So your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. That's verse 16, second half of 16. So this delegated authority area of God. So God loves order, and he goes to great length to describe order in every human relationship. Children to parents, citizen to government, uh, young people to old people, leaders to God, the church to Christ, saints to leaders in the church, church members to one another. It goes on and on. But what's featured here is this relationship between husband and wives. So God designs an order in the home by expecting headship of the husband. Now, you can read in Ephesians chapter 5 if you want to learn about that, but it's brutal, it's sacrificial, it's servant-like, it's Christ-like, it's going to the death. 
also is this fellowship, followership and submission. Now, what, what is that? What is submission? Submission is the voluntary placing of oneself under God and then under the humans that he has charged and held responsible over you. And it's always done to the Lord. It's always done for his sake. But here's the problem. It is all, also always, always, always done to imperfect human beings. That's the problem here. So husbands, imperfect. Bosses, imperfect. Presidents, imperfect. Pastors, imperfect. So, I, for example, trust me, your husband will do an imperfect job in this area. But your desire as a wife will be for his job. So just in general, talking about submission and headship, submission is a wonderful thing. It's always described as a wonderful thing in, in the Bible. Secondly, the Bible always describes headship as a wonderful thing. But here now we see the difficulty in the situation. Now it's a fallen situation and it's manifested, unfortunately, in marriage. So wives, you will now have an increased tendency to be contrary. In other words, the hair on the back of your neck is going to stand up a little straighter in response to his doing his job, and especially if he's done this poorly. Now, Adam has already failed in this area with him not being there and not doing anything about the, the tree of knowledge. He didn't guard, he didn't protect, he didn't lead. So if any woman that's listening to this is married, I'd ask that you would acknowledge, number one, the external pain of childhood, childbirth. And that's well known. It's almost a trope. Secondly, the internal pain of the strife in marriage, and that is the struggle for leadership. And we find it damaged, distorted, but not destroyed. It's still there. It's there every day. So you may see it in an enhanced desire for a domineering rule, an opposition to headship, particularly in marriage. So your desire will be for the job of the other. Your desire will be for the job of your husband. So your challenge as a wife will be to, ru to rule over the temptation to, to do his job. So when you wish to rule over your husband, here's just advice given from a guy, pause. And I would encourage you to fight your battle elsewhere, not against your husband, but fight the battle against the temptation to rule. Your challenge, the primary challenge here that's left with this, with this curse, the challenge is will be into mastering the temptation to rule. Thanks for listening.